and have the correct website. I believe that is marchonpentagon.com. Yep, that's okay. right. Good morning, everyone. This is Gerard Kenyatta Hay here with Cindy Sheehan, uh, one of the organizers, <laughs> correct? Yes. One of the organizers of marchonpentagon.com. We talk about being anti-war, which is really just anti-violence. I, I like to say it a certain way, Sister Chris. It's, you know, the, the anti-war message is an anti-violent message, and it's a message that just stratifies across all of society. You know, we have to go back to being more peaceable people. So how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. It's way early here in California, but um, <laughs> I'm usually up by now. I'm usually just don't have to talk to people, but we're, we're but we're doing great. And um, one of our slogans in the Women's March on the Pentagon, which I'm here to promote, is gun, um, gun control begins at the Pentagon. And it's a top-down kind of kind of issue. Yes, we're we're opposed fundamentally to uh, police violence. We're opposed to and, and very saddened by young people going into their schools and shooting their schools up. But we have such a violent society, and the, as you well know, the United States has been steeped in violence since its very founding. Uh, I, its founding was violent based on genocide, forced African slavery, uh, and uh, this forced African slavery didn't end peacefully. It had to, it had to the U.S. had to kill 700,000 people. And then, of course, we know even after the Civil War, uh, slavery didn't end, and, and racism and oppression. So our society, the leadership is violent and here we try to teach our young people to to resolve their differences without using violence but but then they they see it on the news they see it in the movies they see it on tv and and they see it in video games so we're really struggling against this huge institution of violence in the united states yeah you know i'm i'm amazed and how you put that, I, I, I and, it, and it does my heart so much good, because sometimes I, I, I think I'm a little crazy and I come up with these ideas, but the way you put it was so precisely on point. I, I, I don't have a whole lot of interest in gun control at the local level. My interest is gun control at the earth level. If we can't get it right in government, then it's pointless at the local level. And and. A, a government that's interested in bringing about more peaceful times where guns aren't needed is a government who lays down their tanks, a government right. who lays down their drones, a government who lays down that, that concept of violence. And, and, and when I think about it, I think about it from a perspective of we either talk through our problems or we fight them. And we should be smart enough now. We should have evolved far enough now. We should be mature enough now that we at the local level as homeowners and as kids in school that we can talk through our problems. If we actually have governments that can't do that, then we have the wrong governments. So sister, so this is interesting. I was clicking through the website. If you guys haven't seen it, it's marchonthepentagon.com. Tell, tell me more about the event. <clears throat> Well, in th January of this year, and I can't believe it's already September, we have been organizing for this Women's March on the Pentagon. We looked at the women, the other Women's March, we call it, the um, Chauvinistic Women's March, who, that, that didn't address, address war. And we feel, and you know, I don't know if you know or your listeners know, but my son, Casey, was killed in Iraq on April 4th, 2004. And it, we, what we were just talking about, in our home, we stress nonviolent solutions to problems. And Casey was one of the most peaceful, church-going. He was, a, he was a, an altar server. He was an Eagle Scout. And he got 
preyed upon by the military. The military uh, recruiter like made him all these promises that looked pretty attractive to a young working class person, the oldest child of four. And so he joined the military and was killed in Iraq uh, just short of his 25th birthday. So um, I know my family has been profoundly and directly affected by uh, the US empire and its imperialist wars of, of aggression. And the US has um, over almost a thousand bases in over 130 countries on this planet. And the US, and the US spends conservatively $2 trillion on, on the war machine, on um, maintaining the war machine, on maintaining the bases around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me, so how, does, how do you think that affects our communities? My son joined to get college money. Young, other young people are joining because they can't afford to go to school. They can't find a good job. All the good jobs have been outsourced. And so anyway, we at the Women's March on the Pentagon recognize that um, imperialism, the US war machine, affects every person on this planet, whether they know it or not. So our communities are suffering, um, not only are our community suffering from a lack of resources, but the uh, military presence, uh, the police forces have grown cre increasingly militaristic, <clears throat> excuse me, militaristic in our communities. So the Women's March, the other Women's March, uh, said that they wouldn't address war as long as women weren't free. And what I think they meant was, and I tried to get them to clarify this, was as long as white Democrat women uh, weren't free from Trump. And it was all about being against Trump. Well, the Women's March on the Pentagon is about being against both sides of the war machine, the Democrat, Republican, yes. it doesn't matter. And so we call ourselves a nonpartisan march against the bipartisan war machine. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it, and I love the approach. It, it's so meaningful, and I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your son. I think that that's a story that's repeated in so many different ways. I don't think that we spend time thinking about everybody who's really affected by all of this. Um, I lost my father a few years ago, and he was a part of the war machine also. Now, he was on the technological side. But he was exposed to things that, uh, that the military the defense contractors work on, and eventually it took his life. And I think we think about all the aspects of all the people who die in this war engine, and these are people, and he was just like your son. He wanted to serve. He wanted to, he loved his country, you know. He wanted to be, you know, a, a warrior. Same, the same thing, but we're in a place where <coughs> massive corporations and industries actually make a lot of decisions for these politicians. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, we do need a, a bipartisan approach because if, if both of the parties are pro-war, then the march can't have a, a party perspective. It has to be an anti-violence perspective. You can't have a pro-war government and an anti-police uh, state police, right? You're, it, it all it fits together. It's all these violence, uh, these violent base decisions that we have to get away from making. Um, and so it, it, it being a woman's march, and I'm looking at some of the comments in the room, what was the perspective in having a, a, a woman's base march? Okay, so of course men are invited and men are welcome and we're going to have men, <laughs> men speaking. We have men on our advisory committee. And the, the basis for having a women's march is that we, we looked at the two women's marches that have been since Trump uh, has been elected, and they have been against, They have been anti-Trump. Uh, there was even one sign this year at the women's march um, that said, "If Hillary had been elected, we'd be at brunch right now." And so, if Hillary had been elected, we'd still have the um, 
we'd still have the problems that we have today. We might even have more problems, who knows? But um, yes, they'd be at brunch because it's not to them, it's not about opposing the system. To them, it's about opposing the Republican part of the system. And so we feel that one thing that has been lacking, people know that I, I uh, camped in front of George Bush's ranch in 2005. One of your, one of your guests or one of your listeners yes. just said, I supported you when you were camping in Crawford, Texas. So since my son was killed in 2004, I have been at this. I was at this when Obama was president. Obama took two wars of Bush and expanded them to seven or eight wars. He, uh, he dramatically expanded AFRICOM during his presidency. He, the, they destroyed the, con Clinton and Obama destroyed the country of Libya um, just to pieces, just like bashed it to pieces <clears throat> with very little opposition. So what we see has been lacking um, all along is an anti-imperialist movement. It's, a, it's being against empire, no matter who is in the White House. And so we feel like we needed to engender this principled anti-imperialist movement. And um, we first started calling it a women's march on the Pentagon to address the lack of the women's march, the lack of the other women's march um, not addressing the war issue. But we, uh, we feel that since women are, are, very, are profoundly and detrimentally women, their families, their communities are affected by war, that it has to be women um, organizing, not exclusively, but being the leaders in organizing against empire. And it ha we... It, this is a question that we've gotten all the time. Why women? You know, <laughs> well, you so you're so sexist or whatever. That's not that's not it. You know, of course there's patriarchy. Of course, uh, this uh, this world is dominated in male pattern violence, and women, um, so, you know, women are very vulnerable to that. But we also recognize that women have a special role in society to bring to bring peace. But I never saw anybody, you know, any of the liberals, and we're not liberal, we're, uh, <laughs> we, we don't, we feel like liberal now is just another word for, we support Democrats no matter what they do. <laughs> and, and so, <clears throat> you know, nobody like, none of those men asked the Women's March why are you calling it the Women's March? You know, so uh, we just feel like everybody's invited, everybody's welcome, but let let women be at the forefront of this. Let women lead this. Let us, the ones who have suffered so much, the ones that have so much at stake uh, for our sons, our daughters, our grandsons, our granddaughters, be the ones who lead this, especially this country, the United States is the dominating force in global imperialism, global capitalism. <clears throat> we live here. We are the ones responsible to be in solidarity with all the oppressed people around the world, all the people living under U.S. Uh, military domination. So we're connecting with other women in the world, especially like in Japan, and Cuba, we have very strong um, sister allies in those countries. We welcome um, strong sister allies from other countries, especially the Middle East. And so that's why women, <laughs> you know, there's been a long history, a good history of matriarchal so societies uh, that have been spat, uh, smashed by patriarchy, especially here in the United States before the Europeans came. So uh, let's let's let uh, women be at the forefront with our, uh, like I said, our our um, men, allies, and family members um, helping support us that are working and want the same thing that we want. Absolutely. Well, mothers know best.
mother's no grass. And and what I do appreciate is is when you said you're, you're not a liberal. I clarify to people all the time. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's 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 too much tribalism that goes on in this country. This is why we don't actually run our own country. This is why we actually don't have much say in government anymore. It's because people they label you. They they have these labels to get you in a certain tribe. Now right. others will support you or be against you with that. I always like to clarify when I talk to people, um, which is why I love your approach. Uh, if you're for violence, we don't really have much to talk about. You know, it, it's it's you know, I I, I I link the domestic violence problem to the domestic world violence problem. It's really the same thing, whether you're beating up on your wife or you're beating up on a country. Uh, women always being one of the number one victims of war, whether in that country or in the country the men are coming from and the women are coming from that they serve. You know, when you look at the history of war and 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 sex trafficking and one of the number one spoils of war has always been women. You know, you can take the other's wives and their children. And so uh, it's, it's always good to clarify that this is an anti-violence, anti-violence world movement that we all need to be involved in. And any time that you show up to the stage and you're for these violent solutions, we're gonna to have to back away from it. And and you're spot on right about Obama, unfortunately. Because I, I don't think the identities have anything to do with the wars and the foreign policy. It would seem to me is that in our country, we no longer are in control of our foreign policy. What seems to happen is no matter who's in office, right. you get the same thing, you know? The puppet. <laughs> Yeah, right. They're just puppets. They get in there and they put people in there and they'll give them a label, liberal or progressive or right or left, conservative or Obama or Trump or Clinton. But they always do the same thing. There's more war. There's more police. There's more prisons. There's more death and destruction on the streets at home. There's more death and destruction abroad because empires require death and destruction, period. It doesn't matter what picture you put on it, what face. It's always going to end up the same way. And empires they need people who are controlled under their boots at home and abroad. They need nations that, that, that feed, they need nations that fear them. So, so I love the approach. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why propaganda is so important to get the people who, um, let's just talk about the United States because we're in the United States. Propaganda is certainly um, important to keep the people not just uh, supporting what the government is doing, but to um, <clears throat> distract people from really what the true issues are. So in the Democrat and Republican, if we're looking at dividing um, that division between Democrat and Republican, there's, um, you know, Democrats and Republicans might, ha might have different ideas about social issues, like a woman's right to choose, uh, reproductive freedom, or LGBT issues. But when it comes down to, um, <clears throat> to the important life and death issues, they're in agreement. Re I don't know if you remember when, um, it was in May of 2017 when Trump ordered a bombing of a Syrian airfield. The pundits and the Democrats actually said, now he's acting presidential. I remember Do that. you remember that? Oh my gosh, and yes. so uh, that, that's the basic issue. And you know, you were talking about the violence of empire in, um, across our borders, but veterans come home and veterans are, are more statistically likely to abuse their families, abuse their wives. They're, and then they join the police forces. Yes. And those are the ones, you know, the first thing we look at when there has been a, a killing by a cop is was that cop a veteran? And they come home and they, they're, they're training on being uh, oppressive is so profound that they can't just like come home from the, from the um, wars and just automatically turn that off 
and be like a, a normal nonviolent uh, citizen. And besides, it's not encouraged. Peace is not encouraged in this country. And no. so that's what it's going to take us mothers and grandmothers and our allies to not just like raise, try and raise our children, right? But force this empire and this country to uh, behave appropriately. Behave appropriately. You know, one of the things I like that you touched on too is, is the link because with the, I thought the last statistic I saw, it's it, one of the top abuse, abusive homes are homes of police officers. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important that, that we think about that and that a lot of the police officers come from the wars and a lot of the prison guards, when you get back here from the war, this is what you, you know, the field you can kind of go into. And I, I like to look at the neuroscience of it. I like to follow the doctor by the name of Dr. James Fallon. And he talks about the warrior gene. He talks about our evolutionary path and that we are, we have genes, and I believe there are 27 of them, that actually regulate fear and aggression and violence. And, and in studying the prison system, they have a good understanding of the different parts of the brain and how they're <clears throat> turned up or down based on the circumstances we're in. And that the training that we give our soldiers when we send them to war is we tweak those warrior genes to get them to follow orders and do the things that most human beings can't do. Um, but when they come home from the war, those genes are still regulated for, for that death and destruction in that warrior format. And you bring a warrior home and you put them in a home or you put them in a, a, a prison or you put them in a uh, society, you're going to have those type of problems. And so we have to really, I think, lean more to the professionals when it comes to these things. We have to lean more towards the neuroscientists, the behavioral scientists, and how to bring our soldiers back into society. But then also, is it a great idea that we send them into war with such, such a, 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 a format of, of programming that we can do the most violence possible to, to, to the world? Um, but, well, you know, the government and the powers that be know that they have to deprogram our young people when they join the military, right? They, um, they have to deprogram them from their, and I, I believe most families in, in the United States want to uh, bring our children up to uh, solve their problems nonviolently. So when they get into the military or they go into police forces, they have to be deprogrammed and reprogrammed. And, and what you're talking about, the neuroscience, is something that the US military and the deep state have been developing. They've yeah. been developing these programs, right? So they know. And propaganda began um, in the early 20th century when Woodrow Wilson was trying to sell the idea of World War I to the people of America with, through, with Edward Bernays, who was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. So right. they, so they scientifically, they scientifically program us to be patriotic, to support the troops. To what? And, and this isn't just emotional. This is something that they have been developing for a long, long time. So we also need to understand those systems of oppression. Right. So we can combat those systems of oppression. And we need to do it scientifically, not just emotionally. I know my story brings an emotional reaction to people because my son was killed in Iraq. But where do we go from there? Where, where do we go so we can help program our young people to not join this, um, this <clears throat> empire of destruction? to question it. It just is amazing to me how the liberals are, are now promoting the ideas of the CIA and the FBI because the CIA and the FBI appear to be after Trump. Uh, no, these are destructive entities that have long been working against the people of the world and the people of America. So we have to teach our children to question, to not, um, 
not be allow themselves to be absorbed into this 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 empire of lies, this empire of destruction. And I'm actually uh, running running out of time now. So I just want to say that people can go to March on Pentagon. I want to talk a little bit more about the Women's March. It's on October 21st, which is the 51st anniversary of the first major march on the Pentagon during the Vietnam War. And so that's how we chose this date. And March tw and October 20th, uh, the day before, we're going to have, be having workshops, open mics, so people can see our schedule at, the, at marchonpentagon.com, which you have up there. But we also, this is just the beginning of a movement. It's not something that we're just going to march on the Pentagon and then go home and pat ourselves on the backs and say, <clears throat> well, at least one day we got off of Facebook and <laughs> we went out and did something. <laughs> no, this, like I said, is going to be, be the beginning of an, a new anti-imperialist movement that is principled, that is... Um, that is led by women and that hopefully will go forward and really make a difference. And the people say, oh, in the beginning, people were saying, you can't have it on October 21st. That's too close to the midterm elections. It might harm the chances of the Democrats. Well, I'm saying if, if you're worried that a peace march is going to harm the chances of your political party, maybe you need a new political party. Or maybe we just have to realize that that is only one small thing that we can do is voting. True a, change happens between elections. I think it's important. I think you picked the perfect date. I think you picked the perfect time because that is one, one of my statements I, I tell everybody is the politicians are only going to do what we let them do. Mm -hmm. They're only going to cheer what we let them cheer. And if we get, if we get a good early start on this and we start telling them now, we're not, we're not going for your violent solutions in the wars anymore. And that's when change can start to happen. We have to be very clear. We have to have a humanity, human rights stance when it comes to these issues, not a partisan and tribal stance. And I think it's the perfect date for it. So I appreciate you coming on, Cindy. The other question I was going to ask you, and I'll let you go, is you can, it, it, there are multiple locations, that's correct? Yes, and if you can't make it to Washington, D.C., thank you for um, reminding me, you can uh, organize your own action, but, you know, so far we have actions for sure in Fresno, California, Idaho, Boise, Idaho, believe it or not, um, Asheville, North Carolina, so we're having solidarity actions. If you're in Japan, there's a couple of solidarity That's actions there, awesome. but I just want to say we have, we have to break our programming. And we have to break our dependency, our codependency, like you said. Uh, an addict will only be an addict if people support that. So we have to break our addiction yes. to, uh, to this, this propaganda of empire and stop being codependent with it. Absolutely. Well, Sister Cindy, I'm so glad you came on. I really appreciate it. Love you to death. I love your neutral perspective. Let's just do the right thing. We can change this world. We just really have to. I was representing to. for the Dodgers the whole time. <laughs> I had my Dodger <laughs> blanket over here from Los Angeles. So yeah, so um, contact us. Contact us too. My my email is Cindy Sheehan at marchonpentagon.com. So if you have any ideas, for the weekend, if you have any ideas for our movement, if you'd like to organize a solidarity action that day, if you can't make it to Washington, D.C., please let us know. We're very willing to work with people. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, sister. You have a wonderful day now. You too. Thanks for having me on. Bye-bye.